what's up guys it's covert code here and in today's video we're going to be resuming our zero to hero series welcome back to episode 12 which is about tables so in the last video we pretty much covered how you can use the math class in your scripts and this is going to be a turning point for you guys okay tables are one of the most useful if not the most useful things when it comes to scripting and obviously that's just in my opinion but they are very very useful okay so let me just open the script we had open last time and just delete everything inside and let me just explain what tables are so they're pretty much a group of variables okay so let's say we're describing a red car so the way we do it currently is our brand is equal to ferrari for example okay car color is equal to red uh, car top speed is equal to 250 or something like that okay now here's the fun thing with tables you can do all of this in one line okay so let me just write out how you do this using a table so car details is equal to uh, Ferrari okay comma red comma 250 and that's just pretty much a table right there it's not that complex Always, always wrap your tables in curly brackets, braces, whatever you guys want to call them. I just call them uh, curly brackets and just have the variables inside of the curly brackets. And this pretty much just encapsulated everything in one line. Now you could obviously write it like this, okay, and have it be slightly neater like this, but um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let me just undo this and explain to you guys how you can actually use tables so always remember guys that tables um always start with curly brackets if you were to actually do this um this is not a table okay this is just a mess okay not a table you need curly brackets around a group of variables and in between the variables you need to have a comma okay or a semicolon like this I personally like to use commas, uh, you could use semicolons, obviously it's just personal preference, um, but for me, commas uh, do the job pretty well. And you might have noticed, they don't have to be the same data type, okay? You can have strings, you can have numbers, you can have uh, decimals, you could have boolean values or something, you could have a mixture of variables inside of one table. So let me just remove this, and now you know what makes up this table and now I'm going to show you how you can actually add more values to the table okay so let me just print out the table right here okay so if you just print out a table it's just going to print out you know the table essentially so if I just do copy okay uh, it's not, copy and if you can't see the command line just go to view and command bar right here and just paste inside of this and press enter okay and as you guys can see it just prints out the table that's fine but it's not always the case that you actually know everything that needs to go inside the table sometimes uh you just have to add things after okay so you have a table like this and you give the player the choice to pick a name for the car or something like that so how would you add something to the end of the table and that's that's pretty uh you know pretty simple to do and remember in the last video you had to use math, uh, so this is the math class, you had to use a dot and then a function name like abs like this. This is pretty similar except you'd have to use the table class like that, see how it's blue? That means it's a keyword and just dot and then you have a list of functions which you can use uh, which are inside of the table class. Just like the previous video uh, with math class. And the way you'd actually go about adding something to the end of the table, say if I want to add uh, the price of the car, which is like 250,000 like this, to the end of the table, uh, without uh, having to actually input it like this manually, you would just use table.insert um, just like that. Now, it takes two arguments, okay? So the first argument has to be a table. Any table you guys want to add to, it just has to be the first argument. So I want to add something to the car details table just like that. Now the second argument can be any data type you want to add to the end of the table, okay? So I want to add 250,000 to the end of the car details table. Now essentially all this is saying is 
you know, I'm just telling the script, hey, I want to access the table class and I want to use the insert function on this table to insert this value, okay? And if I just copy this and paste, that's just going to print out the same table except... Okay, that's a fail. I, I forgot to actually print out the, uh, the table again. Let me just do this again. So let me just clear the output, paste in the command bar. There we go. So the first time you printed it out before actually um, adding the, the value is on line 7. And that just printed out the exact same table that we actually inputted on line 5. But the second time we actually printed this out uh, on line 11, it printed out the table which actually includes the value which we put using line 9. And that's how you just add things to the end of the table, okay? But let's just say you don't care about printing the entire table, okay? Let's just assume you only want to print out red. How would you print out red and not the entire table? How would you access this slot in the array or the table okay by the way table and array same thing and the way you actually do that is by using the index okay so if we just print out the table again so uh paste and as you guys can see every single value that we have in the table okay has a number next to them so ferrari has um number one Okay, so let me just copy this so you guys can see it better, I guess. Uh, so, let me remove that. Now, Ferrari has index number 1. And red has index number 2. 250 has index number 3. And 250,000 has index number 4. You just need to keep in mind that every single table that you guys create from now on has indexes okay so basically this is number one this is number two this is number three and so on and for those of you who've already coded in other languages um disclaimer that roblox lua actually starts from one and not zero so just be careful um for those of you who have never coded before just ignore what i just said but i just gave a heads up for those who've coded before so, as I was saying, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. Now, it, there's a very easy way to actually access something inside of it, an array or a table, okay? So this will print out the entire table, and all we have to do to actually access something inside of the table is use square brackets, like that. And this is pretty much going to tell the table that, hey, I don't want to just print you out, I want to actually print something that's inside of you, okay? So if you just remove the print, this is just telling the table that you want to access something inside of it, okay? And if I want to access index number one, this would give me Ferrari, like this, okay? Because one is equal to Ferrari, okay? If I want to print out index number four, that's going to be 250 thousand okay and it's just the same with the other two indexes okay so just to prove this to you guys so if i just print car details that's just going to print out the entire table and if i just print out car details um two that's going to print out red let me just remove this and um copy paste inside of the command bar uh, clear the output and press enter and as you guys can see, the first one, so line 9, printed out the entire table, and line 10 printed out red, which is in index number 2. And that's just how you access different indexes inside of tables. If you still don't get how this works, I would suggest making your own tables, and then just messing around with the uh, square brackets and different numbers just to understand how the process works. But I just explained it, and if you just don't understand, just, you know, rewatch the previous, like, two minutes or something like that. Now, uh, similarly to how you can actually add something to a table, okay, you can actually remove something from a table. And the way you do this is by using table.remove, okay? And similarly to the insert, and as the second argument, you just have to give it an index. So remember how every single element has an index? So if I wanted to remove red from the table, I would just give it two, because index number two represents red. Now, let me just remove this, copy, and it's just going to remove red from the table. 
So paste, clear, and run. And as you guys can see, there is no red inside of the table anymore because this function removed it. You just change this number here if you want to remove something else from the table. Now, another cool thing with tables is that you can actually sort them out, okay? But for them to be actually, uh, you know, sortable, they have to be numbers. So let's say you had uh, the marks of the class. So um, let's say marks is equal to, and you can actually write tables out like this. Uh, this is my preferred method of writing tables instead of just having them in one line. It's just easier to read. So uh, let's say someone got 99, they're very good. Uh, someone got 25, someone got 49, someone got uh, 77, someone got like four, and someone got 83, okay? Now, um, if I wanted to sort this out, so if I just print marks right now, it's just going to print it out in this manner like that, you know? So, actually, let me just clear this out, paste again. So it just printed out the same thing. Now, if I want to sort this out, if I want to see the marks in a sort of manner which I can understand to see what the highest mark is, then I would use table.sort, okay, marks, and you could give it a function like this. I would suggest, you know, staying uh, clear of something like this for now. You don't need to include a function uh, when you're sorting. You just need to do something like this. So you just give it the table as the argument and that's it. This will automatically sort the table out for you. So if I print marks again and clear the output, uh, copy and paste again. So this is the table right there. This is the um, first unsorted table right there. And this is the second uh, time we printed out on line 14. And that's the sorted version. So this will just go from, uh, you know, the lowest number to the highest number. So essentially ascending order, okay? okay? And that's how you sort out tables. Now, the final thing which I'm going to teach you guys with regards to tables is table.find. So let's say you have something in your table and you, you're not quite sure where it is okay so let me just undo everything and let's just say we have a list uh, of students in our class okay so uh, students is equal to and let's just say we have john we have mary we have uh i don't know johnny uh we have uh elizabeth we have um i don't know calvin we have you know john v2 or something i don't know we just have a class of students now let's say that i know that john is the first student and that mary is the second student but i don't know where elizabeth is okay so if i want to remove john for example i know that I, all i have to do is table remove students one okay because i know that john is in the first index However, I would not know what index it is, uh, you know, unless you can actually count them like this. But let's just say you can't count them, okay? Um, sometimes you just have to handle really complex tables. So I wouldn't know where Elizabeth is. So all I would do is uh, Elizabeth uh, index is equal to table.find, okay? And we're going to try and find something inside of the students table and we're going to try and find Elizabeth, okay? So, what I did here is I initialized a variable and this function is going to return the index of Elizabeth if it finds it, okay? So, again, table class, find function, we're just passing the, uh, the table as the first argument and we're just telling it what we want to find as the second argument. And if I just print out uh, Elizabeth index, okay, clear out the output and just paste, enter. And it's saying right here that Elizabeth is located in index number four. So now if I want to actually remove Elizabeth from the, you know, the class, then I would just do table.remove uh, students and Elizabeth index because Elizabeth index is four. Now, what would happen if I try to search for someone or something which is not inside of the table, like, um, you know, Lenny or something, then let me just 
find Lenny, uh, replace these. And if I try to print out find Lenny, okay, and clear out the output and paste, it's going to say it's nil, okay? That's because it failed to find Lenny in the table, okay? So therefore the index which this function returned uh, is non-existent. That's what nil means, okay? So that's all I have guys for tables. Uh, I am going to include a link in the description below, just like last time. So it's going to be a page about uh, tables and all the functions which you can actually check out on the Roblox Wiki. You know, just because um, I only covered the essentials which you're gonna need for sure if you're going to script on Roblox. Um, there are others which you're going to use which are in the link in the description below, which I did not cover, uh, but which, which are, you know, slightly more complex or harder to understand, or you're just going to find what I mentioned, you know, already in the video with some additional examples or just, you know, API documentation. So yeah, guys, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I would appreciate it if you like the video, subscribe, and leave comments in the comment section down below to suggest what videos I should make next. And I'll see you guys next time.